Welcome to Chamber Today. We've changed our format a bit to give you a better view of our local business community. We'll focus this month on some of our farmers market regulars. The Gordon Family Farm, Abigail Sourdough Bread, and Stewart's Honey. This will be a lot of fun, so sit back and enjoy Chamber Today. Hi, I'm Aaron Stern a local business owner, and a member of the Spanish Fork and Salem Area Chamber of Commerce. It's good to be back talking business in Spanish Fork. Our focus this month is the farmer's market. It's in full swing at its new location in front of the Justice Center at 775 West Center here in Spanish Fork. Our intrepid reporter, Nicole Hammond, will take us to three different vendors from the market. First, let's go visit with Stuart's Honey. Hi, today we are with Steve and Stuart's Honey, and today we're going to talk about his business. Steve, would you like to introduce kind of where the history of okay. Stuart's Honey? Stuart's Honey started back in the 1930s when my grandfather decided he would do bees, but actually his father-in-law was a pioneer beekeeper who kind of taught him what to do. So we've been in the bee business for five generations. My grandfather was commercial and he sold a lot of honey in Spanish Fork. My dad was commercial, sold in stores throughout Spanish Fork as well. But my father said, you're getting an education, son. So he sent me off to school. I became an engineer, retired when I hit 50, worked for a good company, Mars Company, candy. And uh, came home and said, dad, I'd like, I'd like some bees on my property. He goes, well, they're all sold, son. <laughs> Oh, okay, well, I'm going to start over. And for 11 years now, or actually 12 years, I've been trying to figure out the business that I thought I knew that I was raised in and realized that my dad and my grandfather would have been out of business in one year, facing the things that bees face today. And so I had failure after failure because what we did in the old times doesn't work today. And uh, I think I've finally got a handle on it, but it's very difficult to keep the bee, bees alive and to work in the bee business. So what makes your honey different from, then, from the commercial honey? Well, um, since I'm a hobbyist, I can do things that realistically commercial beekeepers couldn't do. I have my, bi my beehives elevated. They have a screen bottom, so they have fresh air going up into the hive, and I have ventilation holes at the top. And I did that because, you know, summers can get hot here. And, I th well, bees are struggling. I think I'll just do all I can to help them out. Well, that first year I did that, um, God, the honey tasted really good. And I thought, man, I know honey, but this is unreal. And because I was raised in honey, and, uh, the next year was the same way. So I thought, well, stupid, you've done something to your bees. Some, something is different. And the only thing I could figure out is the ventilation in the hive. Plus, I take it every week. It's fresh. When, I, when I, we take this honey today, it'll be sold at the market on Saturday. Awesome. And then another thing which is really good for local people is for allergies. I'd say about 30, 40% of my sales are for allergies. It works. Those bees are on everything around here. And I, I'm pretty much your closest local beekeeper. Awesome. Well, let's go take a look at your hives. All right, let's go. So this is the box I'm gonna put the hive, the frames in that, I ex that I'm taking. And though they're not mean today, they shouldn't be, you have to give them a little smoke. This will calm any guards. Make them a lot more docile. So how much honey do you typically get out of one box? If it's really a full box. Now this frame isn't full. If you get, a, if you get 10 frames that are full of honey, you can get 50 to 60 pounds nice. in one box. I'll just take my, my brush and brush them off. So when we go inside, there shouldn't be any bees when I start to extract. How many bees are typically in a hive? 
Uh, they can be anywhere from 20 to 60,000 or even more. Beautiful. You can take it when it's about 40 to 60 percent capped and then you know it's got enough moisture taken out of it that it's good to sell. Do you do anything with your wax? Bees make wax and yeah. it's a good thing. I sell it at the market for $15 a pound. And guess who I sell it to? Who? The ones that buy the most are those that make cosmetics. Okay, that's what I was wondering for lip gloss, you know, lip balms and stuff. So this is the table where I do all my work. I put white on it so I can see every little spot. All Good my idea. buckets are white so I can see every little spot. And here's my extractor. And it as well is white. You can't buy extractors like this, so I made it. I'll hang the frame here and we'll scratch it and put it in. And when I turn it one way or the other, then all the, all the, all the baskets will go that way. And, and then I'll stop it and then reverse it when I want to get the honey out of the other side. There's two ways to uncap honey. You can use a hot knife, but I tried it once and it, taste, it changed the taste of the honey, so I decided I wouldn't. So what I use is a scratch. And I just break that, that cell right there. Okay. I break all the cells open, and now I've got to scratch this whole thing to get the honey, that, otherwise it won't come out. Mm -hmm. Now, a lot of them will drip, but they're dripping right into the extractor, so not a problem. I set my timer for two minutes just because it really only takes 30 seconds. is warm. It came from the hive warm. They'll keep their hives at least 84 degrees. So the honey will flow. I don't have to heat it. Commercial guys will have to, with their truck, have to unload their truck and put it in a room where it gets heated before they can extract it. But I can extract it so fast after I get it off the hive, that's not an issue. Now if you want to look in here, you can see in the bottom how the honey's starting to flow towards the exit. Oh, yep. I'll put them up here to drain. Oh, okay. There's a, a really coarse mesh screen there, and then there's a finer mesh screen here. Then there's a finer mesh screen there. By the time I come out tomorrow morning, it's all in here and it's ready to put in the jar. Oh, wow. Now it goes the other way. So I won't touch the honey from here on out. I, in fact, the only thing that touched it was that scratch. And as it comes out there, we are good to go. Now, I'll come out in the morning, and I'll fill that up a couple of times. And actually, I'll run enough through that strainer there to fill this up. But in the morning, it's ready to go into the bottles. You can hear it start to dripping in there now. And then before too long, it'll drip through here. And I have this so I can close it off. I really like to keep my honey pure and clean. All right, Steve, well, thank you so much for letting us come out here today. Well, I'm, I'm glad you did. I like the Spanish Fork Farmer's Market. It really is the only farmer's market in the county. Yes. Because that's what we do. We sell farmer stuff, not trinkets. And Heather gets surprised today because she got a little souvenir from the rear end of a bee. But we appreciate, uh, I appreciate the advertising. Come and buy at Stewart's Honey, but I appreciate the farmer's market. I couldn't move this honey without it. Stewart's Honey, it's one of the best honeys I've ever tasted. Coming up next on Chamber Today, we've got two more visits. Stay with us.
Welcome back to Chamber Today. A few days ago, Nicole visited with Abigail's sourdough bread. Take it away, Nicole. Hi, today we are at Abigail's oven, and today we have Abigail with us to chat about her business. I'm happy to be here. <laughs> Thanks for joining us. Um, today we are, we just want to know kind of the history of Abigail's oven. It's, it's interesting. So can you tell us about that? Yeah, and, and it's not too exciting. I was <laughs> younger when I was 10, I just wanted to start a business. And the one thing that I could do was I could bake bread. Um, I was the oldest of six kids, so it was kind of my chore to do the bread. And so I just knew how to do it. And I was like, I can sell bread to people. So I started selling bread to my neighbors. And one of them was like, hey, Abby, like, you should, if you make this for me every week, I'll pay you, like, I'll pay you every week to make me bread. I was like, okay, that's easier for me. I don't have to find someone to buy it. So I started that and it just got super big. So like people would tell their neighbors, we would continue to sell. And that's where it started, it started in Cedar City. So that's where the bakery started. And then it kind of took off from there. So, nice. so when did you come to Spanish work? So we came to Spanish work about six years ago. Okay. Um, so the bakery's about five years ago. Five years old. We, we started in a small kitchen in Provo, actually. It was a basement, a like, layout, a certified kitchen that we were able to use. And then when we found this building, it was perfect, and it was so great to be able to open it up. So, Good. Okay. And you guys are at the farmer's market, so mm -hmm. if people want yes. to purchase your products, they can get it at the farmer's market. Yes. And then how else can people... So we, bread. yeah, we sell at just different locations, like wholesale locations, so Good Earth, and there's a barn just right by the rodeo, oh, yeah. and so people can buy it there, and then all throughout uh, Utah, there's Natural Grocers and Redmond Farms, so you can find it there. Perfect, and it's a family-owned business now, mm -hmm. right? So how many members of your family work for the business? Well, it's me and my four other siblings, so okay. there's five of us plus my parents, so seven. Awesome. <laughs> yeah, it's really great. We love it. So what is the process of making bread? What's the day-to-day -day for you? Well, we make eight different kinds of sourdough bread. So we make eight different flavors and we'll mix them, say on Thursday night, we'll mix all the different flavors and they sit overnight because sourdough takes about 10 hour process to kind of work through all the, the gluten. So it, then in the morning we wake up really early, <laughs> we come <laughs> and we bake and we, what we do is you can see right behind us is the, the loaves that are sitting there proofing right now. So we'll take the dough, we'll kind of weigh it all out into the two and a half pound loaves and then they sit there, we form it and then we put them in Dutch ovens and we do that all day for about eight hours and then we have our bread ready. So that's kind of the process. Okay. Do you know how many loaves of bread you make in a day? Yes, it's, it varies every day because some days are really busy. Like Monday is our busiest day because everyone wants to buy bread on Tuesday for some reason. Okay. <laughs> and then Fridays for the farmer's markets, we, we make a lot of bread. But in, in a whole week, I, I believe we're at 3,500 loaves that oh, we cool. make. Can you tell us a little history about your sourdough bread? Sure, yes, of course. So it's sourdough bread, we use a starter and we it's a 160 years old starter from San Francisco. So it's got a great flavor. It's our favorite start that we have found. And we also are able to, we love to teach people about the sourdough, about the history of the bread. And so we teach online classes over Zoom and, and we make it, we teach how people how to make it so okay. that they can make it themselves in their own kitchens. Awesome. So. Okay, what are the different flavor options that you carry? All right, so we have, we have, like I said, eight different flavors. And what our basic, we have a country loaf, which is uh, part wheat and part sort of white. <laughs> and then we have a whole grain, which is uh, our rustic wheat. And we have a cinnamon swirl, a jalapeno cheddar, a garlic rosemary, a seeded loaf, and a rust, uh, oh my goodness, rustic rye. A, a Jewish rye, that's what it's okay. called, Jewish rye bread. So we've got different, lots of different flavors. <laughs> Perfect, I know the cinnamon one sounds so delicious. It smells very good in here, oh. everybody. If you could just. <laughs> it makes the best French toast. The cinnamon makes the best yeah. French toast you ever have, the best breakfast. Yeah, that'd be good. Okay, so what is your favorite flavor of bread that you make? Oh, I love a lot of them, but this jalapeno cheddar is my favorite. We make grilled cheese with them and you fry mm -hmm. it in butter. It's so good. That does sound good. <laughs> it's really good. So you guys participate in the farmer's market. So how long have you been in the farmer's market? Um, we've been doing the farmer's market for almost six years now. So just about the whole time. And I love the farmer's market. It's one of my favorite places to be. Good. Is there any kind of relationships you've developed or things oh, yeah. that you like about it? I think it's so fun to be in a market where there's so many people coming from local, selling their products, selling things that they love, that they have kind of developed. And um, it's just, it's the best to be able to meet other business owners, but also the locals that want to buy from local people. Mm -hmm. I've made so many good friends and coming back from my mission, everyone's like, oh, you're Abigail. Oh, it's so good to see you again. And it's just been really wonderful to, to be part of the farmer's market. I'm so blessed. 
So I understand that you have a lot of local suppliers. Yes, yes, we're able to, during the summer, we are able to use the jalapenos for our jalapeno cheddar. I am from a, a wonderful person from, in Santa Quinn, so it's really nice, they're really, really local. And also is our, our wheat, our grains, they come from West Mountain Grains. Okay. So just right down the road, it's really amazing. They're, they're really great making all those grains for us. Good, we love, you know, supporting local businesses yeah. and having local businesses support other local businesses. So. <laughs> Isn't it great? We're like one big happy family. <laughs> <There you> <laughs> Okay, so I understand that there's a store at this location so people can buy bread. Do you want to talk more yes, about that? Yes, we're open from Mondays to Fridays and, and people can come by directly from us. Or we'll go right behind the fairgrounds, so you're welcome to come. Perfect. All right, well, thank you for letting us come oh, today. Lord, thank you for having us. We're so glad that we could come. Thanks. If you haven't tried some of Abigail's bread, you are missing out. Our next story is from one of the locally owned farms. Let's join Nicole at the Gordon Family Farm. Hi guys, today we are at the Gordon Family Farm and let's just introduce who we have with us today. I'm Randy, the owner. <laughs> and I'm Brady Gordon. I'm Taylor Gordon, we're his grandsons. And we couldn't do the farm without him. In 1972, I had the opportunity of buying and purchasing this farm when I got home from uh, National Guard. And my father said, uh, <clears throat> you need to go buy that farm down there. And I says, oh my heck. $50,000, there's no way I could purchase this farm because I was making $3.50 an hour. But his advice was good, it was good counsel. And uh, the thing that I liked about it is that, that it, it didn't make a lot of money on the farm, but it would made good grandkids and made good kids. And, and that's the, really the reason that we have taken on the farmer's market and all these little other things that we have here. So that these kids can be involved and learn how to work and, and be involved and know how to be with adults. Perfect. Earlier today, Taylor and Brady were telling us how they were four years old when they first started the farmer's market. So it's kind of fun to see that history. Yeah, we, I remember, I can remember as long as I've, you know, been alive, we were always at the farmer's market. Um, we started being a little more involved around uh, junior high age. Grandpa would pick us up early on Saturday mornings and um, we'd go get a donut at Uncle Sheldon's gas station and a drink and then we head to head to the farmer's market where we got the corn and the pumpkins and potatoes and everything in between, so. Mm -hmm. yeah. I, I always love how Grandpa was really good at guiding us and leading us, but he, he allowed us to work for ourselves and to learn, learn hard lessons, you know, getting stuck in the mud or your foot run over with the trailer happened a couple <laughs> times, but all of it was learning experiences for us and we're just grateful for our Grandpa for providing us with this opportunity and, and allowing us to, um, to learn to work. It's been great for us, so. To just kind of relinquish a little bit on that story about the trailer, <laughs> uh, we were out uh, hauling some straw and uh, Taylor was really a little boy and he thought, well, I'm going to jump off and see if I can help haul some of this straw. Well, I almost ran over his foot. Almost. And uh, I probably <laughs> did run over your foot. And I says, Taylor, don't you dare tell your mother what has just happened. We no more got in the yard and he's hollering, Mom, Mom, Grandpa just ran over my foot. <laughs> And so it's been like that for many, many years, working with all of our family, and it's been a good experience for us, and we're grateful for it. We're losing the family farms, and it's kind of a sad thing, so. But we're glad that we're involved. We, uh, the farmer's market has been a real, ble was really a blessing to us. Um, when I was a kid, they couldn't, they probably couldn't have used farmer's markets. Everybody had their own gardens. They had on their own produce, their own chickens, or whatever to, to produce. But now the farmer's market is really successful. Man, people come they're so, so supportive and the chamber has done such a great job with that and we really appreciate them because uh, it has brought us a second income to help us what type of produce do you bring to the farmers market every week uh, we we have as we started we didn't bring any potatoes this year because of the moisture we didn't have enough water so we and uh, but we bring uh, corn okay. and potatoes and when we do, and uh, we also do squash, and we bring a lot of pumpkins Perfect. To, the, to the market. And we'll just start bringing squash here real soon. The squash is just starting. Pumpkins are just turning orange, and we love them, orange pumpkins. And all the pumpkins from the Harvest Moon Hurrah are donated from you guys. Yeah, we, so love, thank you. we love to do that. It's a, it's a good service for us, and as my grandkids have always told me, and. Uh, they said, uh, it's not always about the money, Grandpa. And they're right. I think that was, that was him teaching us that. <laughs> we learned that from him. So. But uh, <laughs> it, it, it's not always about the money. It's about serving and helping people. And when you're, you're a great service organization, and we feel that, and so we like to help. 
We'd like okay. to help you. Thank you. So how do you guys get ready for the farmer's market each week? Okay, Friday is our preparation day. We pick the, um, the corn and we, we try to pick it as fresh as we can. Sometimes we pick it on Saturday morning early, but we don't like to be too late getting up there to the farmer's market. So like this week we picked on Friday, uh, we picked uh, about six bins of corn for the market and, and it was really successful. We sold all of our corn. We're really proud of our corn. We, we think we have a good product in our corn. So this morning we just went out and picked and um, it's all by hand. So we, we take the tractor with the those big watermelon bins on there um, and we either take, sometimes we take our little brothers and they'll be the corn holder, they hold out their arms like this and stack them up to their chin, you know. When it's just you're by yourself, you pick it, twist it and stack it in your other arm until it's about this high and then you go dump in the bin and... Over the years, they have packed a lot of corn. They, they just put their hands out like that, <laughs> like that, and they get 25, 30 years in a in a bundle, so they pick a lot of corn, and, and it didn't take long for the neighbor boys and kids that we hire to help us. They want to be like these guys, so they want to pack as much corn as they can. So that's kind of the, that's kind of the process. Okay, I like it. If you want fresh, fresh corn, they pick it on Friday yeah. and you can buy it by Saturday, so yeah. that's awesome. I noticed you have a stand in front of your farm. Do you want to tell us about that? Yes, we, when we first started, <laughs> we just put things on trailers. And we put them out front, you know, and the wind would blow and the snow and all that and it'd blow off our tarps. And so we thought, well, if we want to get into this and have it so it's for people like it and what they see, we built this little stand right here. And, and uh, we had a, a gentleman come and build us a bunch of shelves. And, and uh, their mom comes and she dresses it all up and puts aprons around it and makes it look really sharp. But this, this really has helped us to increase our sales in, in our, our produce that we sell here. We have an honor box. All you have to do is just put the money in the box. When you're done, it tells you what to do. And you, you know, if they don't have the money, we tell them just leave a note and come when they can bring the money. Because like we mentioned, it's not always about the money, it's the service and the, the products that we have that we want people to be able to enjoy like we get to enjoy them. So, but the stand, this the stand has really been, really been a great addition to, to us, so. So last year, you guys started something pretty cool out here. We were out here a few times with the chamber. Do you want to tell us a little bit more about that? Yeah, so um, you can see on our shirts, Gordo's Fun Farm um, is something we started up last year. I had just gotten home from my mission, and my brother here now, he just got home on Wednesday from his mission. It's something we've always kind of wanted to do, and the way it kind of started, actually, is I showed my grandpa one day a picture of this pumpkin shed. Um, it had pumpkins stacked all along the walls, and it's kind of a fun picture spot. And, uh, you know, I had just gotten home from a mission. I was trying to look for what I want to do and have fun with and for a job and stuff. And um, we, he said, why don't we do that? Why don't we build a pumpkin shed? And it went from that to why don't we just do the whole fun farm thing and do a, try a corn maze? And we said, well, if we're going to do it, we better go all in. And so we, um, many of you may know my cousin Ben Gordon. He's, his nickname is Gordo. Brandon, his dad was Gordo in high school. We were both called Gordo in high school, so we figured Gordo's got to be the name for it. Um, so that's how the name kind of came about. And uh, yeah, it's been fun. We have the corn maze, the petting zoo, um, a little train ride for all the kids, um, tons of old farm trucks with slides off of them and tractors and um, lots of little things like that for kids to come enjoy. We have all the pumpkins and the produce here as well. Um, pumpkins and gourds. So there's also kettle corn and all kinds of treats that we have in our little um, snack shed. So, yeah. There we go. That's where I came and got all my cute porch decor yeah. <laughs> pumpkins yep. was from all kind last of year. Decor yep. and <laughs> corn stalks and everything. So if your kids are being crazy and you need to send them somewhere, bring them here because we've got a tractor ride and we'll just keep going around. We can, we can hold on to them for you. No, I was just kidding. <laughs> we will promise we won't run over their legs, yeah. right? Yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, thank you guys so much for your time. Honestly, we appreciate the chamber and, and uh, the concern that we have that we can continue to do it. And you've moved the spot, the location this year, and it has worked out just fabulous. Uh, it's e really easier to get in there and park. It's, it's, not, it's easy to shop. And, and so come on down to the uh, farmer's market. It's a great place to be, and you meet lots of good people and eat lots of good food, too, while you're there. We want to thank the Gordon family for the wonderful produce but also for the years of support for the Chamber of Commerce. There are many events coming up on the Chamber calendar. Welcome Jesse Carden, this year's Chamber Chairman with the details. Thanks Aaron. Here are a few of the Chamber activities planned for the month of September. 
we'd like to recognize Ryan Mortgage Company as the Business of the Month. Congratulations! On the 16th of September, we will be holding our new networking luncheon presented by Hedro. Watch our website for details on the location. The Harvest Moon Hurrah will be held on September 18th. This is a fun day of pumpkin faces, games, and music. This will be held at the City Library Park. The South County Business Summit will be held on October 21st at the Oaks Event Center. You can register for the summit on our Chambers website. The Farmer's Market continues every Saturday until October 30th, 8 a.m. to 1 p.m. at 775 West Center Street. And yes, we are planning our annual trick-or-treat event. More details will be coming. For more information about these events, please visit our Chamber website at SpanishForkChamber.com and that's your Chamber calendar for the month of September. Thanks Jesse, and thanks to Nicole for the stories. It takes many hands to promote the local business community. And thanks to our guests, Stuart's Honey, the Gordon Family Farm, and Abigail's Sourdough Bread for letting us visit your businesses. Thanks also to the leadership of the Chamber of Commerce, Spanish Fork City, and Spanish Fork 17 for the support. We look forward to being with you again with a new edition of Chamber Today next month. Thanks for watching and supporting local businesses.